Well, with us for this hour is Oppenheimer's chief investment strategist, Brian Belsky. Uh, he's going to be taking stock of the ADP jobs report, but also where the markets are headed. And Brian, great to have you with us. Thanks for having us. This ADP jobs report, uh, you say it's largely priced into the market. Right. This number? Right. Well, I think the positive response, right? Now think about how jobs have worked the last six months, not just last month, but the last six months, right? Uh, employers remain very reactive to the news. In mm -hmm. June, July, it was very bad news, so let's batten down the hatches. In the economy and the consumer and jobs are really all about optics. We started to feel better. We saw stock prices rise in August, September, October. We had a great December in terms of retail sales. Uh, employment starting to come back a little bit based on increased demand, so let's do some of that, right? And so well, really the key is going to be Friday's number. There is some correlation between ADP numbers, the challenger numbers, and what and happens Friday's on a monthly report. basis. So let's see that first. But remember, the private client, the retail investor, is still so focused on this 9.8% unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. okay, when we Which go is out, expected to tick down, I think, to 9.7. Yes, but if you do the math, there could actually be an increase in mm -hmm. the unemployment rate mm -hmm. through the year. And that's something that people are going to have a hard time understanding. I think the professional world of investing, many institutional investors and hedge funds understand the math. When you're out talking to the masses, that's all they see or that's really all they hear from the broader media. I think people are going to get a little bit more worried about that. So I don't think the, the it's but all systems the, go but, quite but, yet. But the institutional investors, we would, I think, have been the ones that have been driving the markets up and we've seen double digit gains in the last year or so. Right, but think about this. We have not seen the massive shift out of bonds and into stocks. We believe there's going to be some sort of intermediary trade, just like in 2008. People didn't sell all their stocks and go right to bonds, did mm -hmm. they? No, they went from stocks to cash, CDs, and, and money market funds. They didn't go into bond funds until 2009. There was a lag effect. So I think to have so this the notion- trigger, though, The trigger will be a jobs report, a series of jobs reports. Employment is the teeter-totter for everything in the economy and the stock market right now, okay? Employment clearly is the lagging part of the economy. But we believe, given the macro focus of investing the last 10 years, we can be a little bit more reactive to when we start to see the leading parts of employment, meaning weekly jobless claims and the monthly numbers. If we start to see substantive, consistent gains over a three to six month time period, not one week, not three weeks, not three months, if we see three to six months of gains, then we can start to feel better that companies are starting to feel like they can add employment. They can add without reacting. Right. That's what I'm hearing. That's exactly right. So, but Brian, if we get a good jobs, if the jobs report on Friday surprises the upside, and let's say it's a nice big surprise to right. the upside, uh, is it in some ways off to the races for the equity markets for a short time? Betty, think about this. We're up 25% since August, right? We're up 80% since March since of 09. Since March low. Mm -hmm. Right? And so we continue to be a much more reactive, non strategic investment environment. The leadership that we've seen really since the March lows and since the August, recent August to 2010 lows are the same stocks, the same you groups. You mean technology? No, not technology. Think about this. We've seen, some, we've seen some weakness recently in metals, but it's been emerging markets. It's oh, been small cap. Okay. It's been the commodity structure. Technology's come back since August, but technology lagged last year relative to some other groups. It, it, it had a positive performance, but it lagged relative to some to other some sectors. some others, right, including okay? the financials as well. Yeah. Correct, okay, so we believe from a structural bull market basis, the next bull market needs new leadership. That's why in our report, we said this is a more of a transition year. All we've done in the fourth quarter is kind of rob, uh, steal from Peter to, to pay Paul, okay? Mm -hmm. So Peter is 2011, 2010 was Paul. So, but 2011, do you stay with those same sectors that have outperformed or no? No, we believe that uh, from a structural fundamental basis, technology and industrials are by far over the next three to 10 years, the best positioned fundamental sectors, okay? Technology Consum and industrials. Yes, now we're also overweight consumer discretionary, Betty, because clearly those names in 2008, 2009 were way oversold from a structural fundamental basis. There are some very strong themes to play there, both on the, long, on the low end and the high end. So consumer discretionary, we think for the first part of this year, uh, still remains very bullish. And Brian, I don't think I mentioned yet, your market forecast for the end of 2011 is just a measly 1325. 5% <laughs> I mean, higher than where we are. What happened? So positive is still positive. 
right? Right. And, and I think what, what's interesting is in 2008, we were one of the most bearish strategists on Wall Street. In 2009, we were super bullish and people thought we had three heads. Last year, we were <laughs> bullish again, too. Remember, yeah. the forecast last year was from a majority strategist was trading range, right? That's all we heard, trading mm -hmm. range, trading yep. range, trading yep. range. We stuck with our bullish forecast. Now we're saying a little bit more muted, but still positive. And people are saying, how come you're not more bullish? Well, I think may well, maybe because you've got some strategists out there that are saying stocks could rally another 20 percent. They look at what Brian's saying and say, what's the difference? Well, why aren't you more bullish? Well, the big difference is this. We think many of those same strategists absolutely positively need strong job growth on a consecutive several month basis. We're not so convinced and you're not that's going to happen. That. We have a core fundamental belief, right? Prices lead earnings, which lead the economy, right? So 2009 was the price reset for 2008 debacle. 2010 was the fundamental year. How much did we talk about in 2010 about balance sheets, cash flow, earnings, right? Now 2011, it's time for the economy to go. Now I think the economy will continue to cook. GDP is going to surprise people with the upside. Employment's going to slowly, the little engine that could, but stocks, I think, have already reflected that. From a longer term basis, again, we need new leadership for a new bull market to start. Brian, um, that 1325 that I quoted before, uh, that's on the lower end, I think, of what strategists have said, you know, 2011 is going to be. So if you were a strategist that, you know, had a forecast of about 1400 and above, what would, what would it take to get there? Two things. You need substantive and consistent job growth over a six month time period, number one. Number two, you need very strong loan growth from financials. Much of the financial growth on a year-over-year -year basis is loan loss reserve improvement. We need to see loan growth from those small businesses yeah. going to do CNI loan growth from the regional banks. Financials, at what point are we going to see earnings really turn around for these banks? I and mean, we have already, but we I mean... We have already, but you know, just like in the early 90s coming out of Resolution Trust and the SNL crisis, much of the early gains in terms of earnings were loan loss reserves were just overstated, mm. right? And so what we think we need to see in 2011 is more consistent loan growth from not only the small cap banks but the mid cap banks in terms of a, a providing small mid-sized companies with CNI loans to meet the payroll. That's what it's all about. Okay, and what we've seen so far in 2010, where banks were very reluctant to not only write mortgages but business loans as well. We need to see a substantive change in terms of that. Practice. Before you before you rotate in, we think so. But think about this too, from a longer term secular basis, you have to ask yourself this very simple question: When are banks going to start paying dividends? and buying back stock again because banks in general especially are very dilutive right now because think of the offerings they did in the first quarter mm -hmm. of 2009 to make their tier one capital ratios at all-time highs right they get a lot of stock out there very dilutive when are banks going to start buying back stock and pay dividends again there are some leaders that will will start to emerge first but does that go hand in hand with the with the with the loan growth I think loan growth will come first because okay. they they want to make sure that they can continue on their earnings basis and then start their earning and their operating cash start to come in more and then they'll start to feel more comfortable buying back stock and paying dividends so if your view is that the market's going to go up maybe 4% this year what's your view on the sector performance for banks neutral you know we are we are market weight financials we think there are very strong themes in financials including the capital markets businesses because we're going to start to see some asset shifts in the money in in the money managers, in the brokerage houses as well, and some of the insurance companies actually, I, we think, are a little bit more beaten down on a relative basis. So, is it 2012 that you see financials becoming the, one of the market leaders? 2012 into 13, we th start to see emerging companies that are going to start again, like I said, pay, uh, buying back their stock and paying dividends and cleaning up their balance sheets a little bit more. And the other leaders in 2012, because I know you said you, we need new leadership before the market. Well, we think it's going to be large cap. You know, every strategist in Wall Street the last five years saying large cap, large cap, large cap, right? Yes. Unfortunately, small and mid cap continue to outperform, you know, on, on that call, unfortunately, right? And what have what have clients been buying? Institutional clients and retail clients, small and mid cap, still, after 12 years, okay? <laughs> And so we think that we need to see a new asset class within equities lead the next bull market, and it has to be mega cap and large cap stocks in our view. Just large cap overall. Well, think about this. When the non-U.S. investor comes back and buys stocks, they're going to buy recognized big cap franchise names here. Okay. Small cap, in the small individual investors around Topeka, Kansas, for instance, they're going to buy big cap stocks. Brian, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it.